Hey guys, hope you're doing well. It's time to go camping again. I'm here to do an overnighter, and this is actually the same spot that I did my double overlapping lean-to video, and I plan on staying inside of that lean-to tonight. The high for today is uh, about 52 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it's supposed to drop down to about 30 degrees Fahrenheit tonight, or early tomorrow morning. Uh, so it's actually supposed to be a little bit colder than that last uh, overnight trip. So I hope that uh, I can do a little better this time. We will see. It's going to be a learning experience as always. So uh, I just hiked about 35 minutes in to get here, and I'm going to set up camp first. I'm not going to show the video for the setup because I've already made a video um, showing that double overlapping lean-to and, uh, and that setup. And if you're interested, um, make sure to pop over and watch how that's constructed. All right, I'm gonna get to work and I'll catch back up with you when I've made a little progress on that lean-to. All right, so it's taking me about, I don't know, about 30, 40 minutes to get it set up. It did help that I came back to the same spot because I still had a lot of the limbs and things cut and, uh, and they were kind of scattered around. I did try to spread them out a little when I left, but they were still here in the area. So I didn't have to go hunt and try to cut down any more wood or anything for the for the ridge pole and the, and the ribs and everything. I'm gonna spend a little time working on creating some walls. After that, I will be digging my uh, fire pit. So I'll bring you along for all of that. Okay, so to uh, dig this fire pit, I've got my SOG foldable shovel. Let's get to work. There's my air hole, right? About, oh, I don't know, softball sized or so. And it connects underneath, underground, to my fire pit here. It's about almost four o'clock, it's five minutes of, and um, I've been pretty busy. Uh, since I dug out the fire pit. Some things that I've been working on, I cut some, uh, some logs, some dead limbs, and uh, placed them inside the lean-to to make my raised bed to get me up off of the muddy ground. I have laid in and blown up my uh, sleeping pad. I have rolled out my sleeping bag. I'm bringing again today the 40 degree Kelty Cosmic Down sleeping bag. I also have with me this time a nice wool blanket that I'm going to end up putting inside of the sleeping bag when it's time to go to bed. I've also done something a little different and I've never tried it before, but I've taken a space blanket, an emergency space blanket, and I have tied it to the inside of the tarp, the vertical tarp, just above where the fire will be in hopes that it will reflect some heat back my way where I'm sleeping.
good looking piece of cedar. So some people might wonder why I don't split wood standing up like this. Really, I mean, it's fine that way. It's just hard to find a flat surface out here in the woods. Um, you can't just set it on the ground because as you hit it, it's just gonna push into the ground. You really need a hard, flat surface. So just to show you, um, I scraped away using the ax some of the round top to this dead log here on the ground and just I mean it's it's on there just right so you can do it it's just really tedious I just find it much faster to lay it down but make sure to get low this is a lot more dangerous than the other way and that's another reason I don't do it is because if it glances off you know it's headed towards a leg or something so you just don't miss Again, that's fine. You can lay it right there and just split it. Um, I can chuck that over. I can lay it right there. And I'm on the back side of the log, right? So if it glances off, it's not going into my leg. It's going into the, to the dead log. Well guys, I've been a naughty, naughty YouTuber. I've done quite a bit of work and haven't videoed. I just was running short on time. And uh, as maybe you can imagine, um, when you are having to film, it literally at least doubles the amount of time that it takes to do anything. And I just didn't have that time. And so I'm gonna try to talk you through some things a little later. Um, I mean, I did, like I hung my lantern here. Um, I've got some chem lights hanging from the ceiling. I haven't um, activated those yet. Um, I moved all of my stuff, my gear into the, to the lean-to. Um, I kind of moved all the wood and all that. It's just outside of uh, the entrance wall here. And um, it's about 10 minutes after six and I'm starving. So I'm gonna get this fire going because I need some coals to cook over. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it. All right guys, the fire's been going for less than 30 minutes now. Um, and I just wanted to share this with you. I'm so, I don't know man, if giddy is the right word or not, but I had to take my jacket off in this lean-to. Um, I was getting too warm. Now the fire is good and going. I did, I was worried about the space blanket and the tarp being uh, too close to the rib here, uh, this pole. So, I mean, if you can see, I took a couple of sticks and just tied them on. Just used some bank line uh, to hold it, and the flames may kind of lick on there and, and knock it down, but for now, it's okay. But this is what I'm just thrilled about. Look at this thermometer behind me. It is registering almost 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the lean-to. And by contrast, Let's just go outside, and I know it's dark. I'm not gonna bring my work light with me, just gonna have my headlamp. By contrast, look at the thermometer out here on the tree. Maybe 46, 45, somewhere mid 40s uh, degree Fahrenheit. I'm just so pumped about that. Let me show you my little project I've been working on. I wanna cook steaks, um, not on the coals, but over the coals, but I didn't wanna bring a grill, so I thought I would try to make a grill. So what I've done is I found a holly tree that had fallen down. Still fairly fresh. It had green leaves on it, but it, it was going, I mean, it was down and it was, it, it's going to die. So I took two branches. These are two Y branches. Here's, uh, here's one here 
and the other one right there. And I just put them right next to each other and I just tied them together with a little bank line to form a square. And I'm going to, I, I took the bark and I'm still working on shaving the bark off here. Long two long pieces that go that way. And then I have two more to shave down. I'll probably do one right here and then one there at the end. And, and I think I'm just gonna lay them there. I'm not gonna try to secure them. I, I'm not gonna be messing with it a whole lot. So um, I don't know. That's my project that I'm working on now. And uh, I'll let you know how the finished product goes. Got my water heating up. I'm gonna make some rice. I've got my little grill all set up. It's nice and warm. It'll cook slow. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the steaks on. The steaks are cooking up nice and slow over the grill. Broccoli roasting on an open fire. So my grill bit the dust. The uh, flames got to it and the grease from the steak was on there and it just, poof. I mean, it just went into flames. Um, I was able to pull the steaks off though so they didn't fall in. I just threw some broccoli on just to kind of toast up a little bit there. And I have my little pot of rice over here. A little pot of rice all cooked up and ready to go. So I am hopefully not too far away from eating this dinner. I've got a couple of broccoli left. I've eaten quite a few already. Really nice steaks that are cooked kind of, uh, I don't know, not too bad. Medium to medium well. And I've got a little rice here as well. Man, oh man, the fire is kicking now. Oh wow, look at this thermometer, this is crazy. 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I just put on like four or five pieces of oak, just some rounds, I didn't even split them, and then I've got a piece of cedar right here. And those, man, those, those oak rounds are putting out some BTUs. And then if we go outside, let's check the thermometer on the tree. We're showing about, oh, maybe 39 degrees, just below 40. Meanwhile, in the double lean-to, it's 90 degrees. I think I'm going back in. I have five layers on top, including a thermal. And then um, on my lower half, I have thermal and this kind of these running pants, but they're lined, so that's nice. So these lined running pants. And then I have my wool socks on and then my Dickies cotton socks. Take it and stuff it down where all of the excess material and wool blanket is near the bottom where my feet will be, where I can get more layers there. From then, it's uh, just a matter of climbing in this burrito of warmth. First layer of burrito is the wool blanket. And it comes all the way up. And then the final layer is the sleeping bag, which I'll zip in and crawl in right there. So that's it. With any good bit of luck, you won't hear from me again until six or seven o'clock tomorrow morning. So fingers crossed. Good night, everybody. Well, good morning. Seven o'clock. And it's getting light outside. It's cold out, but not in the sleeping bag. So I woke up at about 4.25, somewhere right around there. And I wasn't cold, but I had to pee 
and I just, I had slept in basically two positions the whole night, and I just had to stretch, and when I got out of the sleeping bag, I got cold, but, so, I stoked back up the fire, I got that going, and I went to the bathroom, and uh, checked the, the temperature outside, and it was, it was like 29 degrees, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, but I got it warmed back up in the lean-to, and I did, I went back to sleep, and I just woke up, I slept great, I slept really good, successful night, got it nice and toasty in here, let's do a quick good morning check, <sighs> yeah, it's a beautiful morning, So breakfast this morning, got a little apple and cinnamon oatmeal, just some Quaker oat instant, uh, instant stuff. I'm gonna make a little coffee, got my little cup, and I'm going to make some bannock bread. I've got my pre-mixed bannock materials in this bag. I need to add a little oil and some water. I'll then mix it up, take it out of the, uh, out of the container and uh, I think I'm, I usually do it on a pan and fry it but I think uh, I didn't bring a pan this time so I think I'm going to um, wrap it around a stick I've never done that before so I'm taking a little risk but what the heck right Alright guys, I apologize for not showing you breakfast. My device that I record on is just acting a straight fool and uh, it's, it's really ticking me off to be honest. So apologies, I had to switch over to my GoPro. Um, you know, I guess it could be worse, but uh, I'd rather, rather it be on the other device, but it's just not going to happen right now. I am going to go ahead and clean up camp. I'm going to get all that done. Um, I'm going to pack up my bag and kind of get it all ready to go, but I did promise to do something fun this morning before I left, and since I'm not freezing my tail off and I've got a belly full of food and I'm pretty uh, comfortable, I'm going to definitely do it, and that is I'm going to do some slingshot practice while I'm out here. But I've decided that what I'm going to do is go ahead and pack everything up, be ready to go, and then do the slingshot practice. Um, and that way I can kind of do it as long as I want to. And then when I'm ready to go, I just pack the slingshot away and then head on out. So that's the plan. I took all of my lean-to down, but I left the ridge poles up. And I've got a nice target here in the middle that I've tied up with uh, toggles on the back and tied down to some cedar planks on the bottom to hold it down. And then I've never seen this before, but I was in the fishing section uh, the other night and uh, I got this idea to take these big bobbers uh, that I'm gonna see if I can bust up with my slingshot. Here's my uh, slingshot. It's a uh, scout slingshot and I'm using quarter inch steel shot. I'm gonna be honest it's been a while since I've uh, shot the slingshot. Um, and at one time, I was decent with it. Um, I expect to be pretty rusty today. Got the bottom of it. Got the right corner. Middle of the paper target. Bam! Go check that out. That shot hit right through there. That was nice. Had a couple of shots, one right there. That was my first shot that I hit. Second shot that I hit here on the paper. And third hit up there. Yeah, here, 
here, here, here. I haven't hit the center yet or in the diamond, but I think I'm going to take some shots at one or two of the bobbers now, see if I can pop one. I heard it nick the bobber. Okay, maybe I'm crazy, but I think I'm getting ready to hit it. I really want to see if I can hit that thing. So I'm still out at 33 feet and don't think I'm moving any further. So let's bust this thing. Bubba bam Wow I, Funny I, I've gone through a lot of shots And I'll keep up with everyone into a counter But I was just thinking You know this may not happen Out here um, Hitting the paper target is one thing Hitting this guy is a totally different thing But I got him <laughs> That's fun um, Alright guys From what I've learned Um I've redeemed myself, I think, completely from the last overnight camping in the cold weather. And uh, for my first official camp in the winter season, um, going right at, you know, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, just below freezing, a complete win. And um, I'm just pleased. I, I'm, I'm riding on cloud nine hiking out of here. So, you know, I think I'm going to call it. Uh, a day while I'm ahead on this bobber here so um, I hope that video turns out okay and uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and uh, thank you for watching um, and the continued support um, on Instagram and uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook even and on YouTube um, this YouTube thing uh, I'll just say it's been great for me it's really been kind of a lifesaver. And um, I really appreciate everybody's support. And um, I'm just very thankful. So subscribe for more content. Maybe even hit the like button, you know, if you feel like it. I did bust a bobber from 33 feet, so uh, I think that's worth one like. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.